All right, April 10th, Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Manager, is back again to try and finish out this series um, on the Vue.js authentication with Auth0 using Vuex and Vue Router. Say that 10 times real fast and you get a prize. I don't know what that prize is, but you get one. Um, let's see, we're, we were on uh, this, this past one. It has been quite a bit of time. December 21st was the last time I updated this. I have been swamped with client work, but um, I had somebody leave a comment on this one saying, hey, can you please finish it? And I always get motivated whenever I get a comment or some feedback. That means somebody actually cares. Uh, so uh, I'm excited, again, reinvigorated, and so I'm going to try and finish out this series, uh, even though I'm swamped in client work. Um, let's get back into it. Let's talk about where we are at, because I even need a refresher myself. You probably don't if you just watched the last video, but I do. Um, and so I'm on the application here. I've got it running. I just did a uh, npm run serve, which brings up my application as a local host here, and I can click on these, and all these are open to the public, but when I click on members, I am redirected to a login page. So if you look down, let's see, down here, right here in the corner, I'm going to hover over members, and you're going to see that if I was to click on that, it should go to slash members, but we end up on slash login. That's because our protection mechanisms are blocking that page. Um, so let's take a look at we, where we need to get to. Uh, the next thing we wanted to do was work on the mutations, which was to control the overall state for the main application once a user is logged in so that we can show them things that need to be seen once they are logged in. So right now we're logged out, nothing special. Let's fake that the user is going to be logged in. I'm back here in the code. I'm in the router.js file and back in this router.bort for each uh, section. So again, here's all our paths. This stuff up here is our paths from the router. Paths. And then um, this is that before each function that we've been working in. And right now, the um, this variable which controls whether or not the user is um, known to be logged in is currently set to false. So I'm going to set this to true. Again, we're faking the actual check. We're going to put we're going to implement that actual check. But let's fake tell the application that the user is logged in and see what's different. Um, so that doesn't hot reload it because we're already on the login page. But I can go back and view these pages as I could before. Now when I click the members page, the, um, I am actually able to view the members page. So it's no longer redirecting me to that slash login. But now I am logged in, I should see a logout button and maybe some other things in like a navigation or something, maybe my username up here. I need to know, the program needs to know when the users are logged in and that needs to be controlled by a global variable. Remember, this variable here is local to this router before each. We want to commit something to the store so that the overall application knows that the user is logged in. So now that this guy's logged in here, I want to show a logout button. And let's take a look at the code again. And I'll show you where that is. If we look at the app, this is my, my template for my overall framework of the page. And you see here are the three buttons. There's the about, contact, and members. They, they're all showed no matter what, shown no matter what. But the logout button has this v if statement on it that has that looks at the store and says, is the user authorized? And right now that is hard coded um, and does not change. It's just a state variable set it false. And we're going to create the mutations to be able to change that. Um, so if I set that to true, which needs to be done programmatically once the program knows the person is logged in. Now you'll see this hot reloaded. Um, you'll see the logout button shows up as it should when the user is logged in. But that's going to show up all the time now because I hard coded it. So let's go back and let's change that to false. And let's create a mutation to change that programmatically. So let's do, um, Let's do a mutation here and we will call it set user is authenticated. And it's going to be a function that view will call for us, that this view X will call for us. And it receives two parameters, the state and the replacement, which is the variable you're sending in. Now the state is something that the mutation provider is going to send to us when it calls our our um, our function here. So 
that's going to give us access to the state variables up here. So if I set state, which it's going to pass in, dot user is authenticated, I'm going to set that equal to the replacement. And so all I'm going to do is set this variable. This, this function, this mutation is going to be called. I'll show you how to call it in a second. And all it's going to do is on the store, it's going to set this variable to whatever I pass into it. So I'm going to save that mutation there. And now I want to go back to the router. And this is where we talked about that if the user is authenticated, if the router check is true, we need to tell the application to show that stuff that I just talked about. So we are going to commit. Um, and I normally we do this.store.commit. And we would call that function um, set user is authenticated and send the true variable. Now this is wrong. I'll tell you why in a second, but let's actually try and compile this and see what happens. So um, I'm calling, I'm committing to the store. I'm calling the set user is authentication function and I'm sending it a true variable. That's going to call the mutations. That, that's what a commit is, is, is it calls a mutation. I'm calling this variable here uh, and I'm sending it the replacement. It's going to fill this replacement with that true that I'm sending. And that's um, going to replace this, ultimately replace this thing from false to true. Now, if we go back to our store here, or our, I'm sorry, the application here, you can see it hot reloaded and already gave us an error. It said this is not defined. Um, and actually, I even did that wrong. Normally, it would be, let's go back to app here. Nope, router. Sorry. Normally, it would be this dot string store if we were to call it from one of our components. Um, but again, that's still going to error out. And, and now this time, um, uh, string store, the store variable, is not there. And what it is, is that if I click the right thing, um, th we're not in the right context. We actually need to pull in the store variable here. Uh, and then we have to go and get it and import it. So I have to import store from store. So what that's doing is that's going to actually import this, this store file and, and give us that variable to work with. Um, and then, you know, um, um, what is the compiler on the back end? Uh, what, Webpack is the word I was trying to come up with. Webpack um, is going to handle, you know, getting everything right for us. But we just need that store variable to tell the code where, what we're trying to do. So now with this saved, we've got access to the store. We're going to call commit, which is a mutation. And let's see if our code cleaned up and there our errors are gone. It hot reloaded. And now the user is logged in. I know that because I can reach the members page and also because the logout button is shown. And now if we go back to the this part here, this router auth check, which is our overall decision as to whether or not the user is logged in, I'm going to change that to false. And now when we come back, you can see I can click on members all day long and I'm redirected to the login page. Um, and that logout button has programmatically been changed uh, to be to not be there. So um, that's how we're programmatically handling that. Now, actually, there's one more thing I should do. I should really, um, if this guy is true, so the user's logged in, technically, um, I should see the user's logged in. I should see a logout button here, but I'm not seeing it yet, even on the home. Like if the user's logged in, I should see a logout button here. So technically, I need to move that function up a little higher in scope and I need to just say here if router auth check um, I should really do that commit up here because it shouldn't matter if if I'm trying to get to a, a, a protected page or not I should always anytime they're logged in I should tell the the application that the user is um, is logged in. So now if I hit save and we go back and look now, even though I haven't tried to access the members page yet, I still have the logout button. Now that button doesn't do anything yet uh, other than console log that it's trying to log out. 
but um, it is showing up no matter what. And uh, when the user is logged in, and I'm going to hammer this home one more time, if I change this to false, the application is going to hot reload, and that login, a uh, logout button is gone because the user is not logged in, and I can't get to the, the protected pages. Now, one more thing I want to make sure to talk about is that why did we use a commit, and why didn't we just um, do store dot state dot user is authorized equals true? We could do that. In fact, I'll leave that there for a second. Um, I'm not going to save it. But the reason we do that is so that in this module here, this is the view debugger plugin that you can search for Chrome view deb debugger plugin. You'll find this. And you can see that it allows us to verify the state of what's going on. If you don't use a mutation, this doesn't get updated, so it makes it really hard to debug. Now, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, let's take a look and see. Um, well, I don't have any functionality to change it yet, so I guess that other thing won't, won't show up. But just know that the reason we, we call a commit um, is so that the application can do what it needs to do in between to help debugging and some other things as opposed to directly setting the state on the store. That's something you don't want to do. Don't do this. Okay, maybe I'll show that later in another video when we uh, when I have a login and log out button and I can show how that doesn't affect how that affects the state um, or the the debugger. All right, so let's take a look at where we're at here in our uh, overall design plans here. So we created this uh, set users authentication function in the store as a mutation, and then we completed the commit placeholder to call that anytime the user is officially considered log in so that the front end can show the right things like the log out button or maybe the user's um, you know name or whatever, the avatar, that kind of stuff. So that should take care of this video. That completes that step. We'll get back and get into some more videos on the log in, log out functionality and um, completing the, log, the, the authentication in some upcoming videos. So again, this is Terry Caliendo of Dedicated Managers Technology Consulting. We're here to help you if you need any help. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, subscribe to us. Please find the subscribe button on our page. There isn't one for me because I'm logged in. But if you're not logged in, you'll see a subscribe button here. Subscribe to our channel so that you get updates as I come out with new videos and whatnot. So that's it. Thanks again. Have a great day. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.